one of the things I liked about this tent and the reason, uh, another reason why I went for it was the simplicity of the pole design. You've just got one centre pole and like many tents out there that are using you know, just a centre hoop or something like that, if it breaks or gets damaged, well you're knackered, especially if you're out in the sticks. And a lot of these poles are getting more and more complex and more and more lightweight and things like that. So as I say, if anything goes wrong with them, uh, you've no tent anymore. With this, at least you have the pole that comes with it, which is really substantial and it weighs about 350 grams. So couple that with the fly sheet, which is about 750 grams. You're talking about a kilogram for just the basic shelter without the inner. I can also use these pacer poles of mine with uh, an adapter piece which goes in between uh, you basically take the handle section off and you put this in between the two ends of the pacer poles and you've got a, another lightweight way of having a pole for this tent so you don't have to rely on, on this one however I would probably use this if it's really foul weather you know if it's absolutely blown a hoolie or you know really stormy there's going to be an awful lot of forces getting put on that centre pole, hence why I'd probably just take that, you know, in the bad weather. In good weather like this, then, this could be the ideal option. The other thing is that because it is a centre pole, you could probably just get a branch from somewhere here. You know, cut a branch down, use a branch. Uh, depending where you are, it's a handy thing if the pole was to break or something like that as well. So, it's a really simple set up in regards to the pole system. And the pole is shot corded as well and comes with a, an adjustable end section so you can set it to the height you want and you're good to go. Well that's the tent up folks, and it didn't take long at all, to be honest. Uh, once the main pole's in, it was just a case of tweaking the outside to make sure everything's nice and symmetrical. But you've got these heavy duty straps here for tensioning. One of the other things that drew me to this tent was the number of guy points. When you look at my Southern Cross, the one thing I said was that you're going to have these big corner side panels that are totally exposed to the wind and there's no way to, you know, tie them out. And I said that it should really be uh, tie-out points, especially because they're touting it as a, a four-season tent. So another plus for why I went with this, because you've got this pyramid shape and, you know, TP-style tents like this have been going for millennia. Used right across the globe because of its wind shedding capabilities and if you start looking into TP style tents and the, uh, what they call the mid, mid styles tents like the dual mid or the uh, trail star they're fantastic tents in the wind absolutely amazing and it was really a trail star I was interested in but you'll notice that people raved about it because of its storm capabilities and then come away from it again because there was a lack of an inner for it at the time or you couldn't use it on a campsite because you've got the open end at the front so this seems to tick all the boxes in that regard 
But as I said, when it comes to the wind, you do have all these, well, they're for the door, but you've got these reflective tie-out points all the way around. You've also got these extra points on the bottoms. And then just to top it off, you've got a tie-out point here, but there's also, I don't know if we'll see it, there's also one up inside here. So you could have this really nailed to the ground. Uh, if you've got the you know good pegs, and I would recommend uh, you know quite long pegs, something like Easton's or something like that, uh, and then you're going to have something that's just going to be like a limpet, you know, on the deck. Another little tie-out point is actually on the the peak. You have this loop here that you could tie this to a branch as well, and. What I've actually thought of using it for is you could put a carabiner through that and then actually hook it to your washing line for drying out when you get back rather than at the moment I have to try and drape the tent over with all the pegs you could actually just hang that up and put a couple of the tie outs and just leave it to dry The fly sheet on the tent is double siliconized and it's very similar to the Hilleberg I think it's a Kerlon 1000 and it's strength ratings and that double siliconization on it uh, is going to help with keeping the you know, snow from building up on it and the water is just going to run straight off it you know there's going to be water off a duck's back to this especially with the shape you know with the pyramid shape it's going to shed water amazingly but it's also very lightweight uh, considering the size of this tent you know, 750 grams for the fly sheet. It's pretty good going. Uh, it's not ultra light by any means, but to me, it's, it's it's pretty good for you know the size of space you're getting. So this is inside the tent, and it's really spacious, but not overly big like I thought from some of the footage I'd seen and some of the pictures. I thought it was just you know you could almost stand in it, but it's not quite that big, but there's plenty of room for, you know, getting changed and stuff like that. Now, you're going to lose some of that space, obviously, if you have the double inner or the single inner. The tent doesn't come with the double inner, but it was a feature that I liked that I could purchase it, and then it allows me to use this tent when I go away myself, or if I decide to go with the wife and we go out to the Cairngorms or something like that, I can take the separate double inner. And even with the double inner, the tent is still only about 1.9 kilograms, so it's not going to break your back. And me and the wife could share the, the, the load. I could give her the 700 gram fly sheet to carry, and I would take the pole and the inner nest. Now, I did purchase a separate inner for this tent at the same time as I got the, the fly sheet and that. And it allows me to survive through the summer in Scotland when the midges are out and about. You can also get an inner nest from China now. There's lots of uh, these nests for sale on Alibaba and things like that and they're coming in at you know 300 grams. So if it's quite warm you could get away with a, a mesh inner no doubt and you know for slightly colder weather I've got this walled nest which will just take some of, or the edge off some of the wind blowing through underneath now and again. So another option is to basically have a, you know, a bivvy bag, something like an Alpkit bivvy bag. And especially in autumn time, maybe even in the winter, where you could, as I say, you could just have uh, a couple of uh, ground sheets down, have your uh, bivvy bag and sleeping mat and you'll probably be really really toasty. Another option with this tent which I was considering doing was you can actually have a titanium uh, stove you know, in here to heat it. Now I've not seen it in this particular tent but doing research on YouTube I've seen tents such as uh, the Shangri-La 3 be modified to do it and there's lots of footage from American backpackers and that and hikers 
using the Golight Shrangal R3 with this wood burning stove inside this tent or this type of tent and you can actually buy a vent piece that you stitch in or get somebody to stitch in for you so obviously it wouldn't melt the the fabric. Uh, this you know fire retardant panel you stitch this in and it allows you then to have a port to put your uh, chimney out. So if you were out yourself in the Cairngorms or you know in the winter somewhere really quite wild then you can buy these titanium uh, lightweight uh, fireboxes as such and I think the one I seen was 750 grams so what you're saving in the inner tent because you won't really need an inner I would just use a bivvy bag and sleeping bag have the titanium uh, fire on the go and you'd have an amazing place in the winter to, to spend the time be absolutely amazing to me that's one of the features that uh, kind of appeals to me the, the possibility of doing that modification and still having a, a lightweight tent so in a way it'd be like coming back to your own little bothy at night yeah it could be really really good and you know a wee concept idea for the the future film another feature that this tent has is the three vents in the top here they are really quite big and the ventilation that's going to come through from underneath and up and out of there is just going to be tremendous uh, it's going to just yeah, make such a difference uh, to the livability of the tent most tunnel tents I've had and seen and used you know there's there's very little vents or they're tiny little things you know at the top or tucked down at the end and to me this is just uh, the ideal setup to be honest or am I just living the dream here and the hope that this is going to be the ultimate four season tent because I can tell you I've been searching I've been searching so I have the inner tent here that I purchased which is just a one person uh, inner that has uh, side walls as well as mesh for midges now this particular inner it's you know been said that it's good for use with well in Scotland should I say and midges so I'll soon find out anyway the uh, first time I take it out Well folks, that's this uh, new tent. I spent a lot of time researching tents to try and find the ideal tent for going out four seasons. And to me this could tick all the boxes. Uh, it's lightweight, we've got pole options, we've got inner nest options. Do you need an inner nest? Uh, there's proven people used it in the Cairngorms in winter. Uh, so it's really a suitable four season do all tent it takes a little bit of tweaking it's not a you know it's not complex or hard in any way either it just takes a little bit of fettling but once you've done it a couple of times uh, it's really really easy I say all the tents I looked at and I've tried the majority of them are tunnel tents and they've all got their uh, faults one way or another Either they're too cramped, or there's condensation, or you know they're terrible in wind. You know the last thing you want to be doing in a tent, especially on a mountain, uh, and I've seen it lots of times and spoken to lots of people about it. And you don't want a hoop-designed tent where you're 
spending the whole night bracing the sides like this, trying to stop the tent coming in. At least with this, because of its shape, it doesn't matter which way the wind turns, it's going to protect you to a point. So, before everybody goes off on one, all these people saying, well, you should be pitching the tent into the wind. The wind changes. I've been on mountains where it changes suddenly and comes in for different directions and the tent doesn't know what is going on and it's bouncing about like a loony. So, it's back to this tried and tested pyramid shape. And that's why tents such as the Mountain Laurel Designs Dual Mid or the Trail Star, Trail Star, sorry, are fantastic tents for shedding wind and being out in a storm. The downside to the Trail Star was that if I wanted to go to a campsite with the wife or just myself, it's not the ideal tent to take to, you know, a campsite. No doubt people do it, but it's not my cup of tea. You know, it's quite a big area and you've got the open aspect of it. I just prefer having a door that you can zip up. So, I did fancy the dual mid. I think that was, you know, the one I was really wanting to go for, but it was back to this. It comes from America, big waiting list. The ones on eBay were going for daft prices, and I, I didn't want to spend all that money because it was really, you know, it's quite expensive the time you import it, have import taxes, to find out that it wasn't very good. So then I also looked at it from the aspect of this tent where you've got this kind of round shape whereas the dual mid has four sides. So it's still kind of like a sail going to get buffeted to, you know, a bit more than this. Not sure. I mean, really the ideal scenario would be to try this tent out in several or with several other tents in a real storm. So you'd have something like the, you know, the dual mid, the Hilleberg Solo, Solo, whatever you want to call it, and this. So on closing, uh, what I would say is that the the footprint of this tent is, you know, it's quite big, but nothing too drastic, nothing like I imagined it was going to be. So it should be fairly easy to pitch in a lot of places, uh, especially where I go while camping. So I'm going to keep using it for the rest of the year into winter and we'll see how it performs. But it's uh, yeah, a package that seems to tick all the boxes. And there's also a few other YouTubers that have uh, films on this tent and some sites with information. So I'll put the links below on it so you can have a, a look at those as well. There's a, a gent who's done a, I've forgotten his name so I apologise, but done a good film on you know, the different configurations with nests and whatnot. A bit, a bit like what I was trying to do. Not too good, but <laughs> not as good as his. But I'll put a link to his film below so you can see that as well. So the rain's coming on and I'm going to get the camera in its waterproof case and we'll take some footage of the tent coming down because that's one of the things I love about this tent and you'll see why in a minute.
has to be the easiest tent I've ever had for packing away. So there you have it folks, the Wiki Up 3. Looks a good bit kit. So I'm going to see how it performs on my next few adventures when I'm out and about. And it's now time to get back home and something to eat. So as always, thanks for watching. I hope it was of use to you. And please comment below. Let me know what your thoughts are. Do you think it ticks all the boxes? I don't know. So anyway, until the next time, take care.